Hello, in this video, we look at the algebraic and the geometric properties of the cross product. Remember now, the cross product is a vector that is orthogonal to the two original vectors. So you have two original vectors, you cross them, you get a third vector who is orthogonal to both the other two. In the last video, we looked at the sort of just the calculation, how to perform the calculation. In this video, we look at the properties of the cross product. So let's start off by having three vectors that are um, labeled u, v, and w, and then uh, a scalar labeled c. First up, number one property is that if you cross, take the cross product in the opposite order, you'll get um, not the same vector. You'll get a vector that is pointing in the opposite direction. u cross v is equal to the opposite of v cross u. It is not commutative like the dot product was. We're going to see this uh, in action with um, with the actual with some actual vectors and with the right hand rule. Second property, distribution. Say you want to add two vectors first and then cross with the third vector. That's what's on the left hand side. On the right hand side is the fact that you're crossing first and then adding afterwards distributing the cross product over the vector sum. Next up, say you want to take a cross product and then scale it. It turns out that you could actually scale one of the vectors first and then cross. And it doesn't matter which one, you can scale the other vector and then cross. What you can't do though is scale both. It doesn't work that way. The zero vector cross with any vector is automatically going to be the zero vector in whatever order. When you cross a vector with itself, you get the zero vector. The sixth property is the one where we combine dot and cross together. It turns out that if you have a cross product and then you later want to dot with a third vector, what you can do is actually um, do the cross product between the first two and then dot with with the uh, with the last. So the order now we really, we got to really worry about the order in the cross product. And so um, this is set up to say, there is actually a third version of this. Um, but this is to say that you can uh, cross the second and third and then dot with the first, or you can cross the first and second and dot with the third. Uh, the seventh property is, is actually a double cross product and it distributes in a strange kind of way that ends up not having any kind of a cross product at all. Um, if we had more time, we'd look at that um, in, in great detail to understand why that would be the case. But um, but those are just the seven properties. I want to lay them all out for you. Those are the algebraic properties of the cross product. I also want to look at the geometry behind the scenes. And to really understand the first property, it's helpful to understand the right-hand rule. It works like this. You have two vectors, A and B, and you want to take their cross product. Using your right hand, you can then figure out the direction in which the cross product vector points. Here's how it works. You take your first, um, you take your right hand and you take the four fingers of your right hand and place them along the direction of your first vector. And then you curl them in the direction of the second vector. The direction in which your thumb points is going to be the direction in which the cross product vector should point. Okay. In particular, we can use this to figure out why when we cross in the other order, it points in the other direction. By switching the order, you get the opposite direction. It's kind of hard to do, but you can do it. Try it out. Put your fingers along B, curl them in the direction of A. It hurts your arm, but you'll see that your thumb is now pointing downward. B cross A is minus N, while A cross B is N. All right, the right-hand rule. Great. Now, let's dig into some geometric properties of the cross product. Some things you would like to use it for, more like applications. So we have U and V, and then we have uh, an angle. The angle between them is called theta. And we want to look at 
well, of course, by definition, what happens is that the, the cross product is orthogonal to both of the original vectors. But actually, the, the cross product is connected to the angle between them, just like the dot product was. Um, the formula that connects cross product to the angle is different than the formula that connects the dot product to the angle. Um, on the left hand side here, we have the magnitude of the cross product, how, how long the cross product vector is, is tied to the angle between the vectors. Uh, equal to the product of the two vectors times the sine of the angle between them. Okay. That's an important property there. We're going to use that property to help us with the other prop some of the other properties on this slide. If you ever cross two vectors and get the zero vector, that's going to be the case if and only if those two vectors are scalar multiples of each other. Meaning that um, if you have the vector v, then the vector u is some constant times v, like 7v, or maybe even negative 11v pointing in the opposite direction. That's still one guy written as a scalar multiple of the other guy. You'll always get the cross product to be zero in that case. This calculation that's a number two turns out to be the area of the parallelogram that is um, going to be determined by your two vectors. So we have a vector u and a vector v, and uh, the side lengths are mag u and mag v. The area of any parallelogram is the, the, um, the base times the height. So the base is the magnitude of v, and when it comes to height, we can use trig and see that the sine of theta is that height over mag u, so the height is equal to mag u sine theta. And we could put these two together, height times base, and that'll be the area. And that's the formula that we have there in Roman number, and back, back in number two. Uh, mag u, mag v, sine theta. Uh, if you want it instead, not the whole parallelogram area, but the triangular area, uh, two vectors determine a triangle, but also two vectors determine a parallelogram. But the area is going to be half of the uh, parallelogram area, that's all. There we go. Um, I want to take you to an applet that's online, a really nice uh, applet, not made by me, um, mathinsight.org. Uh, gets all the credit for the, for the work here. Why I like this applet so much is it allows you to take and manipulate the vectors. And what comes out in red is the cross product. So you can take the blue and green, cross them, and get the red. Let's go to it. There we go. So you can manipulate the, the blue and the green by making them longer, by making them shorter, by changing, changing their angle. And in turn, it'll give you the, both, both the shadow and it also lets you know what the, what the cross product is. It doesn't do any calculations here, but at least you get the visual behind the scenes. It used to be that you could make them so that uh, it's going to be hard to do. I'm going to try to make them point in opposite directions and that would make the uh, cross product vector be small zero even and then it grows and a cross b b cross a anyway nice to play around with so you can get an understanding of those properties that we talked about so uh, let's end the video now um, in the next video, we'll look at a three-dimensional object that's determined by three vectors and how to calculate that object's volume using cross products and, and dot products. My name is Nikai Rimmer. Thank you for watching this video. I ask that you would just um, ask me any questions if you have them. Don't, don't be afraid. Comment down below. And if you want, like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.